Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to be doing indoor photography using natural light. Ha! Revenge is mine. I've got a couple of props I'm going to be using. Uh, first of all, um, I've got my white backgrounds and they can be used to isolate uh, photographic subjects like that and also used to uh, reflect light like this and they're really handy to have. I use them pretty much all the time because uh, they can act as a light reflector and a background at the same time. Really handy. Okay, secondly, here's my natural wooden background and I just bought this at a hardware store and that's really good for like organic subjects or maybe rustic food shots or things that I've just collected outside and it gives a nice uh, warm and kind of rustic uh, background. This was a couple of bucks at a hardware store. Okay, next background is these satin black cards. So if I have a subject that's quite light, if I have a subject that's quite light, I can really isolate it against a dark background and it gives a kind of uh, moody and uh, almost a, a, a still life um, feel about the photo. And also, they can kind of block light out as well if you want to use them as a block. <clears throat> Another one is this. That's a, just a plastic cutting board, but what makes this one different is it has a pattern, if you look close up, that kind of simulates a stone, such as granite or a slate, which is quite nice for food photography gives a nice background. I think a lot of food is served on slate, well sometimes perhaps, uh, so that's a good simulated stone background. And because the sun isn't coming through that window so much yet, because it's early in the day, um, I'm going to be using a tripod uh, just so I can um, keep the shutter speeds really low. Uh, and the ISO low as well. Uh, so that'll help me with, uh, yeah, photographing in kind of low light conditions. And last but not least is my 5-in-1 reflector. And I've got a silver reflector on this side and a more gold and warm colour on this side. And if I undo it, I have a white reflector or uh, light diffuser here. So if harsh light starts coming through the window, I can diffuse it a bit using um, this diffuser. Okay, so our first scene will be with some uh, canned goods and dried goods, which kind of reflects the uh, times that we're living in at the moment, with like food hoarding and uh, provisioning for emergency situations where if you're self-isolated or quarantined you don't want to leave the house so you have to make do with the food that you have here and we've just got some tin tuna some uh, red cabbage some mackerel uh, some soup and some dried goods like sugar and couscous and rice and I'm just going to be doing um, a couple of long shots with my 70 to 200 lens and uh, we'll get some kind of close up looks with the kind of rustic kitchen type background with this tablecloth and uh, we'll give it a go. I've got my lens set at 100 millimeters. I've got my aperture set at 7.1 f 7.1 to give a bit of depth of field because I'm quite close focusing for this lens uh, and my ISO is set at 100 
and my shutter speed will be one tenth of a second. And because there will be a bit of wobble after I press the button, I've got it on a two second timer. Okay, lock it off there. And I'm just using the natural background of the tablecloth. Um, I'm not using any reflectors or anything because uh, the light is quite good and because I've got this low shutter speed I can still keep my ISO low. It's the dishwasher peeping. And I'll just go a bit wider. going to build uh, a little shoot set near the window and uh, this time we're going to use those white cards to make the cans and the food more isolated. It's a little bit dull around the subject that I want to photograph so in order to fix that, I'm just going to use this uh, reflector to bounce the light back onto the subject. So if you see there, I'm just bouncing the window light back onto the subject, off and then on. And it illuminates it quite well, I think. I'm just going to put it on a 10 second timer and then I'll go up to the subject and I'll use this reflector to bounce light back. Okay, I'm just moving the table a bit closer to the window to get some more light and maybe increase my shutter speed um, and maybe not be so reliant on the reflectors. We'll see how that goes. For this next shot, I've just uh, been beach combing and I've assembled some shells and some shark's eggs. So we'll go with a um, organic kind of uh, macro shot or uh, still life shot. Okay, so I've got my subject set up here on a white background. I'm getting uh, quite a lot of light through the window now, but still not enough. Um, there's still some dark patches over on the side that isn't facing the window. So once again, I'll use my reflector or and that's putting quite a lot of light on it. I'll just see how it goes with the white background. Yeah, definitely the reflector that is built for the job is more effective in bouncing the light back. So that's with the reflector and that's with it out. With the reflector, with it off. Reflector on, reflector off. It, it's not a huge difference, but it's just enough to give uh, more detail and definition. I've just lowered the tripod now. I'm going to get into some close-up shots and lower angle shots and maybe even some semi-macro.
Yeah, so that looks good. I'll just get the reflector to bounce some light back on that as well. So I hit the button with the two second timer this time. For the next shot, we're going to um, take those same shells and uh, shark or ray eggs and put them in a bowl and we're going to uh, take some photos of that. Okay, so I'm just putting my aperture at 5.6 now and I see when I put the camera and focus it on the subject it's 160th of a second and an ISO of 100. So I'm fairly confident I can hand hold these shots and that'll give me a bit more flexibility to move around the subject and change the angle. Oh, I've still got it on two second timer so I'll change that to normal. You may notice here that there's a line here where there's shadow and here is blown out highlights. So it's better to keep the subject out of the direct sunlight and in the shadow. And that gives you plenty of light still, but doesn't give you any unmanageable highlights. Okay, so I'll just do some different angles now and uh, close-ups. And... Get some semi-macro shots. And I'll just go over the top as well. Get a portrait shot. Okay, so with this next shot, uh, I'm going to do a still life. And uh, this is probably one of my favourites to do. Uh, so I've got my white background set up, but for this still life I want a dark, sort of moody uh, background to give a bit of contrast to the colours of the subject. So I'm going to put my uh, black cards here. And I'm using this white background as a sort of support for them. And because it's black, it picks up every spot of dust in the room so I'll just try and make it as clean as possible and I'll just bring my subject in because my uh, dark background is so narrow I'm not going to be able to go wide so I'm just going to kind of zoom in and isolate certain parts of the uh, citrus tree. So it's a really young citrus tree and uh, I've slowly but surely killed it through lack of knowledge and care. Uh, but before it totally dies I'm going to see if I can get some photos of it. I quite like this, uh, this light setup. I've got a lot of side light coming in from the window and it's uh, kind of illuminating and giving the uh, the fruit some definition. My setup is a 17 to 50 millimeter semi macro lens and I'll be starting with 6.3 turning off my image stabilization so the motor doesn't make any vibrations and I'm just going to move in as close as I can to some of these fruit and uh, we'll see how we go. happy with how that looks so far and you can really see how the side lighting illuminates the fruit and it's also got a little bit of rim light around the side here 
and it really stands out against the black background which is really subtle and nice and reminds me some of these old classic still lifes from the uh, golden age well that's the aim anyway I'm sure I'm quite far off it but you get the general picture so another trick uh, when you want to reduce camera shake or motion blur in the camera is to switch to live view and that uh, brings the mirror up and that means uh, there's no mirror slap uh, or shutter slap when the uh, shutter is pressed. So I've gone into live view now and the camera just by touching the touch screen now two second timer and you can hear a difference it's really softer and it's not some so much of an impact when the, the shutter activates Okay, so that's just a, a quick one from me on some indoor photography and some a uh, few little tips and to give you some uh, creative ideas for yourself while you're stuck inside during this time. And uh, I'll see you next week for the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. All the best and see you later. Revenge is mine. Again.